On the evening of June 11, 2023, I made a mistake. I discovered a game in the same vein as Getting Over It, I Am Bread, Surgeon Simulator, Octodad, games intentionally designed to piss you off. And since I like using my only hobby and source of happiness to make me suffer, I decided to try the game out. And what would result is me stubbornly and desperately trying to beat the game for the next five days. Let's watch. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why am I playing this? No, you fucking sack of shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jab! I just got fucked. I just got railed. I just got fucking railed. You're so useless. No. This game is not being fucking serious right now. Mental. When you're on the edge of something. No. What the fuck? This game is so shit. So before even buying the game, I knew I was in for a suffering just by looking at the mixed reviews. Not a lot of these negative reviews are just salty people who lost progress, including mine, but some of them do bring up valid complaints, the clunkiness and bugginess of the game being the biggest offenders. And while the other games that I named earlier were designed to annoy you, they at least ran very smoothly and had very few bugs, and when you'd make a mistake, it was your fault as well as the game's dog shit controls. But with this game, it seemed like not only was it bullshit from a gameplay standpoint, it was also bullshit from a technological standpoint where you are not only fighting the difficulty, but the game itself. Any sane person would have seen this and decided that it wasn't worth their time. But I have the decision making of a sixth grader. So on I went with my purchase. And within the first five minutes, the technical issues made themselves immediately apparent. You start in this little town, the favelas, the shanty town of Brazil. And remember this place, reminisce about its look, memorize its layout, we're gonna be returning here a lot. You make your way up these homes using these platforms and railings on the roofs of the building, and try to not get lost because the places you're supposed to go look just like the places you're not supposed to go. And we made it to the top of the building where our first technological glitch gets discovered. Okay. This bug occurred during my entire playthrough, even after the patch. All 40 hours, all five days, the music in this section would cut in and out every single time. Good start. The first real somewhat challenging section of this game is this pipe maze section. You get three paths to pick from and have to figure out how to get to this spiral at the top. You also want to spam your grab button since every time you climb up one of the pipes you'll immediately fall because this game was developed by someone who opened Unreal for the first time and decided to make a game. My first time on this section I had no fucking idea what I was supposed to do and just aimlessly shimmied my way around until I somehow, on complete accident, found my way to the top. I would not get this lucky later on. So we make it up the spiral where I discover what the beds do. Like, what the f And onto the first, what I like to call a traversal section of the game, where the game takes you from point A to B using a various set of vehicles. My first time on this, I got pretty hyped as it was essentially just free progress, although as I fell 60 times throughout the game, I realized that it was free progress at the cost of a minute of my fucking life every single time. I'm going on my phone. But as you sit around scrolling through Twitter for a minute, the train takes you to this very inspirational elephant that gives you a very encouraging speech to keep going and never give up. You won't make it. You're a weak kid. Go back to the favelas. Your friends are there. Your destiny and life is there. You have to seek happiness there. Get a job in the favelas and live there. There are many like you. We make it to a pretty straightforward train section where you just jump from cart to cart. Pretty hard to fuck this up since they're massive platforms with tiny holes to fall into. I, I can't, I can't believe it. I can't. All the way up to the train with the factory new Asimov skin. Very nice. Solid $300 for that. Onto the industrial revolution section, I guess what you'd call this, which has two very slim railings, which really scared the shit out of me at first, since I don't trust my shaky seizure hands to be able to go straight for that long. So I took my sweet ass time. Three minutes to be exact. I went so slow and carefully that it took me nearly three minutes to cross these railings the first time, and I don't think the game's physics knew how to handle the sloth pace that I was moving at. But after that, we make it to the first real challenge of the game, the first actual parkour section that doesn't have massive train carts to jump onto, with this jump in particular being the one that scared me the most in the beginning, with this beam above my head stopping me from moving forward and forcing me to make this wide ass jump, and I had no faith in my abilities to do it. Oh. Surprisingly enough, I made that jump. The same cannot be said about this one. No! You're supposed to hit the jump button, man. Why the fuck do you just walk off? So I land on the factory new Asimov train and lose what I call at this point a decent, decent chunk, chunk of, of progress. progress. That's adorable. So after three minutes of shimming my way up the pipes, I finally make it back to the first somewhat challenging part of the game. 
What the fuck? So after two minutes of shimming my way up the pipes slightly faster because I'm getting impatient, I make it back to the first somewhat challenging part of the game. Will I make it this time? Bless the inconsistent ass grab mechanic. So I proceed up the beams where I inspect the world below me and notice a wall splitting off the favelas from the city which my dumbass calls the Iron Curtain. That is not what the Iron Curtain was. I then, for some reason, start comparing this wall to the Berlin Wall which split off East and West Berlin and if he told me that at the 49 minute point of playing this game I would be discussing communism versus capitalism, I would have fucking shot you. But just would you know it, as if we were summoning Beetlejuice, talking about communism made a fucking statue of Karl Marx appear. Oh, that's, that's Marx. Is that Marx? <laughs> <laughs> we were literally just talking. Wait, what? We were just talking about, we were just talking about fucking communism and then Marx is over there. <laughs> Moving on from the random history and back to the fucking game that I should be focusing on, I make it up to these fairly easy jumps on these platforms. I make it up the first, I make it up the second, I nervously make it up the third, I make it up the fourth, I make it up the fifth, and then I see this fucking chode of a platform and my brain starts thinking of ways to do anything but that jump. What? It's really not that hard. I wonder if I could... <laughs> nope, just make the jump. Not that hard. It's a wire. It doesn't have collision. Please. You can't! No! Oh, you can't! Are you kidding me? Saddest part is I generally thought you could walk on that. So I catch myself on the train tracks and march my way back up to the dickhead elephant and despite what I said earlier, I'd rather be scrolling through Twitter right now. So after five minutes, I make it back up to the Industrial Revolution section. Mm. Oh no. No. <laughs> I then left to pet my cat for 10 minutes. So I make my way back up to the pipe maze and where I said I got lucky solving it the first time, this time I did not get so lucky. As I spent, I shit you not, nearly 15 minutes until I solved how to get to the top consistently. I also fell three times. I miss, Narsai, I miss. So I finally make it back to the wire that I tried to walk on as if I was Nick Walenda and I can finally go for my redemption. It has been 50 minutes since I initially fell trying to walk the wire. It took me 50 minutes to get back up here, although this time, I did not make the same mistake. Or wire. <gasps> although my heart did nearly implode. So with that, the first actual challenging section of the game is complete. And for a little while, it's essentially smooth sailings from here. We make it to these weird desert islands, Breaking Bad reference, we jump off Victor's coffin, and onto a train station, which leads us to this construction site, the next actual annoying part of the game. The beginning isn't too bad, and you're mostly just parkouring on the inside of a building. That is up until this part, where this wall leads up to a giant crane that is going up the entire objective of the game, and when I first saw this, I assumed this is where you were supposed to go. What the? An invisible wall. An invisible fucking wall. It appears that that is not where you're supposed to go. Now I fell onto this mini island, so that drop may not seem that bad. Although this is also an island that is connected to fuck all. And there is no way to go back to the main path from here. The only way is to drop down and lose more progress. I tried to jump to the metro, I missed and landed at the industrial part. Within one minute and 30 seconds of landing at the industrial part, I slipped and was back at the favelas. Two hours. Two fucking hours. And I'm back at the beginning. Sure know there's gonna be an invisible wall. I attempted to make my way back up to the construction site, although this game's half-functioning mechanics put a kibosh on that. Also, as my character for some reason just started gliding and then decided not to mantle because the mantle mechanic is a coin toss whether it'll save you or not. Oh my- Not even a minute after writing that review, I hop back onto the game because my stubbornness would not let this game win. I played for about 45 minutes, where I made absolutely zero progress. You won't make it. You're a weak kid. Go back to the favelas. Your friends are there. Your destiny and life is there. You have to seek happiness there. 
Get a job in the favelas and live there. There are many like you. You have to be with them and then stand out. You won't make it. You're a weak kid. Go back to the favelas. Your friends are there. Your destiny and life is there. So on the evening of June 12th, I got back onto the game expecting to be at the factory new train since that's where I left off the night before I started on the favelas. And that's when it clicked. This game does not have a fucking save feature. So with this new knowledge of just how shit this game really was in my head, I still continued forward on my journey to try to make it back to the invisible wall that caused all of this, even though that was not my fucking fault. I then make a second discovery on the pipe section. Instead of shimmying and breaking my legs on every railing, I can just walk if I left click. Within four minutes of playing this game on my second day, I have learned more than I did in like two hours on my first. I started out pretty well, make it to the floating beam section in about 13 minutes, which was probably a record for me at this point, and then the boy didn't grab. The second time here, the coin toss did land in my favor and he actually mantled onto the curved railing. I then make it up the platforms, jump on the chode platform, and just like that, I have passed the first hard part of the game. Okay, this part's pretty easy. I make it back up there first try, I'm getting better, just ignore what I did five minutes earlier. Through the Breaking Bad reference, I somehow get lost on the top of the train tunnel, and finally, in about 25 minutes, I have made it back to the construction site, something I could not do yesterday, no matter how hard I tried. And finally, finally, I have made it back to the path that looks like the path, but is not the path, because the real path was to my fucking left in this building. I swear the crane looks more like the main path than the actual path. But it doesn't matter. This is officially the furthest I have been. I go through the building, manage to find a way to get fucking lost again, and realize that I'm supposed to drop down instead of going up. This name is a fucking lie. And on to what I like to call the second somewhat hard section of this game. The up house reference as you have to platform on these tiny ass cinder blocks with nothing to break your fall. And surprisingly enough, I was actually able to do this first try. Maybe because there's no wire that I tried to balance on. But what I was not able to do first try is this fucking windmill. Since it's spinning to the right, I had to jump weirdly to the left. My first attempt on this jump, since I had no concept of basic fucking physics, I didn't even try jumping to the left. I fell all the way back onto the factory new train after an invisible wall pushed me off the Karl Marx statue. The second time, to my credit, I went back to middle school and learned basic fucking physics again and actually compensated for the windmill going to the right by jumping towards the left. I did not, however, compensate for distance. 30 minutes later, plus a minute of struggling to climb up the most non-functional staircase in the universe, I have made it back to the windmill section with the knowledge of science and all my past failures. My first attempt, I didn't take rotations into account. My second attempt, I didn't take distance into account. This time, I have come back with a complete set of knowledge to make this jump. That's a really bad sign. I actually made the jump though. And finally, I have made it to what I like to call the first mini checkpoint of this game since there is a massive structure to catch you in case you fall. The highway area where you are greeted by the largest fucking pug in the universe giving you another motivational speech just like the elephant. Many have broken lives here in pursuit of their dreams, but only a few have been lucky. Your childish stubbornness, if you continue on this path, will only bring you regret and- I then get flagged. The first challenge of the highway section is having to solve this mini railing maze with a bunch of fake paths all while the Modern Warfare 2 Embassy Sun is melting your eye sockets. It's nowhere near as confusing as the pipe maze was though since even half blind you can see the path that leads to fucking nothing. So this maze, in comparison to the previous pipe one, fairly easy. Then this next section dropped my soul to my ass multiple times. A marathon of platforming on a bunch of random asses from the engine, some big, many small, surprisingly enough. I was able to do this first try, although I did miss like four times and for once the mantle mechanic actually came in clutch. At this point, I was feeling pretty confident this was the furthest I had ever been. I made it past the first two parts and breezed through this weird storage room parkour section and made it to the fashion store, I mean 7-Eleven. 
that does not look like a 7-Eleven. Now this part where you're parkouring off the shelves at first glance seems pretty easy. The section before this with all the random floating shit was way more intimidating, but would you believe me if I told you that not only did I fail this section this time, but I failed it multiple times later on and I don't know why. It's really not that hard. They're short jumps on fairly large platforms I just couldn't do it. Thankfully, the mini highway checkpoint was able to break my fall. I breezed through the maze, make it to this random object platforming section, which I first tried last time, no problem. But this time, I managed to fall all the way back down to the gas station before the highway. Oh my god, oh my god. Alright, yeah, that one I can't even blame on the game. This is why I don't fucking text and drive. Shockingly enough, I actually first try everything on my way back. The cinder blocks, the windmill, the random bullshit objects, the storage room, just for me to fall in the exact same spot that's literally easier than everything I had just done before it, I don't know what's wrong with me. Third time now where I discovered that I had been making this section pointlessly harder on myself, where I've been trying to platform my ass all the way to the shelves over there, I could have literally just dropped onto this shelf right there. What is wrong with me? But it doesn't matter because I have made it past this section, only for me to fall into a random glory hole because I got distracted by some low polygon feet. I'm under the massive feet. I'm turned on. What the? Hey man, I've got my priority straight. On my way back to the feet, I managed to make the mistake of overshooting the massive random bowling pin and fall all the way back onto the maze. Although this was in fact not a mistake, it was a happy accident as I discovered that this bed bounces your ass all the way up to the mall, allowing you to skip not only the second half of the maze, but the storage and random object section. I could make out with this developer. What the If you ever approach me, I will file multiple sexual harassment lawsuits against you. At this point, I called it quits for the day. That drop pissed me the fuck off, and I really didn't feel like trying to go all the way back up there, and you know what? Was satisfied with the progress I made. So I had to keep my PC on the entire fucking night, because this game has no fucking save feature. So I get back onto the game, and it is exactly where I left off. My PC has been on for 13 hours at this point, but it's all worth it because my progress has been saved and I am still on the highway section, only for me to fall all the way back down to the factory new train in the first 30 seconds. I might as well have shut off my PC. Those 13 hours were useless. So 49 minutes after I fell to the factory new train and multiple fails later, I make it back up to where I left my PC on for 13 hours the night before. And for some reason, didn't take the bed shortcut that I found, but who cares? I made it back up to the mall first try, only to fail at the shelf section, which once again, is literally easier than the section I have consistently first tried. My skill level is backwards. Maybe I'll use the shortcut this time. I'm rewinding back to the feet. At this point in the game, I was tired of doing this section over and over again, even though I could have literally just skipped it. So I attempted to take a risky shortcut and use these beds to cut through this section, even though I literally could have taken a much less risky shortcut and skipped even more but my brain only remembers what happened 30 seconds prior and not 13 hours prior. So how did this risk go? Not well. This is the first time I use a bed to try to get me back to my lost progress only for it to have the complete opposite effect. They will not be the last. A minute train ride and 18 minutes of platforming all the way back up to the highway later, a beam of knowledge from 14 hours earlier hit my brain like a ray of light as I, for some reason, suddenly remembered the bed shortcut this time around and I completely fucked it up and almost knocked myself back onto the construction site. Okay, note to self, do not jump directly onto beds. There we go. So finally, after an hour and 32 minutes, I finally managed to make it back up to the troll highway that fell apart. So finally, after an hour and 34 minutes, I finally make it back up to the troll highway that fell apart. And it's a good thing that the road didn't rebuild itself because I probably would have fell for it a second time. With the road gone, this part is fairly easy since it's basically just platforming a bunch of cars, which in and of themselves are fairly big objects and easy to land on. Ignore what happened two minutes earlier. But there is one small object that you have to land on in this section this motorcycle and just like the first time i saw a choke platform that i had to land on i tried to find any other way to go about this section instead of attempting this jump the first time i tried to walk in a wire with no collision the second time i tried to jump on a taxi i should have jumped on the motorcycle you know this is actually a good life lesson it reminds me of a quote that i once read the easy road often becomes hard and the hard road often becomes easy I attempted to take the easy road twice and both times I paid for it. 
I tried to avoid a challenge and both times I was paid back with a harder challenge. So next time in life, if something feels too difficult or seems like something that you can't do, just remember that not doing this game broke me so bad that I turned philosophical. So in an hour and 34 minutes, I made it back to where I failed the night before. Within about 35 seconds, I fell all the way back onto the Industrial Revolution section, but hey, I made it to a new record, the motorcycle, approximately 41 steps from my previous record, but you know what? That's progress. In about 15 minutes, I was surprisingly enough able to make it back to the motorcycle and this time decided to take the hard road and actually succeeded first try. Because the easy road often becomes hard and the hard road often becomes... At this point, nearly two hours into my third day, I was finally making some actual progress. And by that, I mean not 41 steps worth of quote, progress. We make it to this nice looking fountain area with Virgil's chair overlooking a city on a bridge and a reddit moderator chilling on this bench. Go up this staircase and I nearly fucking commit suicide because I didn't realize that the top of the flight of stairs was your immediate death. We make it up to the ferris wheel, the second of what I like to call the traversal sections, although this one is nowhere near as long as tedious as the minute long scroll through my twitter feed. And onto this bike lane which surprisingly enough has no tricks and leads to a bed that I almost killed myself on. Where you're actually supposed to go is into this office building. I saw these objects lined up like this, had a PTSD attack, and nearly shit bricks thinking that the glass was about to break. It doesn't break by the way. This is a somewhat easy platforming section with these long tables making up the majority of it. The first being what looks like an off-brand Windows PC, and the second being the $34,000 cheese grater PCs. Up the elevator where I get a glimpse of lost souls ascending to heaven and onto this weird capitalist section. Through Bobby Cockney's garage and parkouring off the stacks of toilet paper that he leaves lying around, we make it to a helicopter which I attempt to ride, that's later in the game. What I'm actually supposed to go up is the Apollo 11 rocket sitting on this random rooftop. This is a fairly easy section, mostly just slowly spiraling your way up it and making a couple of short jumps up these stairs which unlike the windmill section surprisingly function properly and after 246 minutes i have beaten the game then go up the elevator and begin the next section of the game. This is in my opinion one of the coolest looking areas in the game. Straight up ancient Greece with a bunch of statues and murals around and a random dinosaur that got executed. I don't remember reading about my boy Alexander ever doing that. At first I thought that I had to balance on this spine like I did on the other railings earlier in the game and I was convinced that I clipped through these ribs. I for some reason thought that I had no clip through the ribs and not the fucking wire. We make it up to the crest of the Redeemer statue, remember we're in Brazil after all, although I do think the statue is slightly higher up than it is in real life. The book here unexpectedly bounces me all the way up to the statue, something that scared me every single time I did it because remember I have short term memory loss. And you make it up to another traversal section as the hand of God carries you to fucking school. Ah yes, I remember my dad talking about this. A fairly short section with basically just Einstein and Darwin on the outside and we profile pictures on the inside. I the first actual somewhat challenging section in the second half of the game is these weird Hogwarts table. The tables themselves aren't too bad since they're pretty big but the benches I do not like and I like the books even less. Aside from those and the books, so far the second half of the game really hasn't been too bad though. That is until I make it to this astrolabe section which is the windmill all over again. And it's a good thing that I went back to physics as I am now prepared to make this jump same as the first time. No, you fucking sack of shit! I land on Greece, breeze through that section, same with the school section, jump on the Harry Potter tables and somehow manage to find a way to miss and it wasn't even the benches. That would have been understandable, I missed the fucking table. Ancient Greece did not break my fall this time. Bobby Cockdick's skyscraper did. I then proceeded to miss the jump to the bike lane, miss the jump to whatever the fuck this is, and was not the elephant. Not even a minute later, 
I was back at the favelas. Why does he not mantle? Nearly an hour later, I surprisingly enough made it back to the windmill part two, where this time I decided to explore in an attempt to take the easy road instead of the hard road because I'm terrified of jumping on the walnut. I know clip through this wall, shit nearly excretes out of my asshole as I thought that I was about to be pushed off. I see a chest piece and for a brief moment, my brain becomes smart and I attempt to jump on the chest piece instead of the walnut. Okay, I have to jump on the walnuts and all the way over there. These are too high for me to mantle. <laughs> What the fuck are you talking about? I then miss the walnut badly. Thankfully, grease breaks my fall. I land on this island that's outside of the main path and bounce on a bed that I believe will get me to the main path. Where instead bounces me is a tree that my character no clips through. What the? Now that one wasn't my fault. That was fucking bullshit. I then proceeded to play in an extraordinarily impatient and angry way to try to get the fuck back to the astrolabe section and pay for it by falling 11 times within the span of 52 minutes. I ended the day on the train tracks right above the favelas. June 14th and my fourth day on this game has to be the most eventful day of the bunch. I get onto an update for the game which makes me giddy with excitement thinking that all the clunkiness and bugs are going to be fixed. The fixes that they added were railings to the pipe section so that you don't have to grab twice anymore. At this point in the game, I am capable of completing the pipe section in less than 30 seconds. What would have been the most notable point of the update would be the improved ability to cling going from 20% to 50%, whatever that means. Although speedrunners complained that it made the game too easy, so the developer reverted it back to 20%. Gamers are the most stubborn of our species. The real most notable part of the update that actually stuck because I guess not enough people bitched about it is you having more control while you're falling and being able to land on something to save yourself. Very useful change, until I get stuck on an invisible wall while I'm falling. Foreshadowing. There are also some camera changes, such as being able to put your character in the center instead of the left or right side of the screen, but at this point I had nearly 30 hours on the game, so changing my camera angle would be like restarting completely. I never used this feature. A feature that I would have used, though, was a save feature. They did not add a save feature. So back on the game for the fourth day now, and onto the brand new pipe section, Look at how revolutionary this change is. I don't have to grab on the pipes twice anymore. Okay, I beat the section. I make it to the fake winner screen in 38 minutes this time around, a slightly quicker time compared to the original 246 minutes. And make it back to my fucking wall, the astrolabe. I have failed this jump twice already. This is my third attempt. I failed the windmill jump twice and made it on my third attempt. Will I be able to repeat history here? What the fuck? What? His leg just got stuck. He fucking tripped. Like the useless little sack of shit. I then glide off of Greece and begin to realize that even after this update, this is still the most clunky game conceived by a creature calling themselves a human. But don't worry, they added railings to the pipe section. Back down to the Bobby Cockney skyscraper we go, and on my way back up to the rockets to get to Greece, my friend makes a discovery that would have been very useful two days earlier. I'm skipping this entire section. You have got to be fucking kidding me. You have what? got to be fucking kidding me. <laughs> That's okay, because I'm never gonna need that. Nearly 30 minutes later, I finally make it back up to the astrolabe again for my fourth attempt. This time around, where I once again decide to use my brain and attempt to mantle up the chess piece again, since it's right fucking there. And wouldn't you know it? That's what you were supposed to do the whole fucking time. But it's not my fault, because these chess pieces have the most inconsistent mantle in the entire fucking game. Maybe they'll have railings to them next. Once you make it up the chessboard, you grab a fucking brain for some reason. Look, I found where the dev left his brain, which explains why this game is so d And then a random fucking T-Rex literally pops into existence and charges you something that didn't scare me at all. What the fuck? You make it to this greenhouse afterward where I got lost for, I shit you not, like 15 minutes. I climbed up these leaves, get a fucking rose that behaves the exact same way as the brain. Why does this game have collectibles all of a sudden? And then I jump onto this turtle that leads me to a maze with my imminent death being what's on the other side of it. I wander around, jump on the turtle, jump back for like 15 minutes until I search up what to do. And what I was supposed to do was jump into the fucking maze. Turns out in this section, you're supposed to be able to actually see the glass floor on the ground while you're on the turtle. And it doesn't just pop in once you take a leap of faith. But because I set my game's render distance to medium for some brain dead reason, the glass floor did not load in. So I make it onto the maze with the glass floor that I couldn't see because I'm an idiot and immediately figure out what I'm supposed to do since I can see this egg clipping through the ground. I mantle onto it twice because the dev hasn't added a railing yet. Maybe that's in the next update. He just added railings to the pipes, give him some time. And then I'm supposed to balance on this maze to the floating eggs near the center. 
this wouldn't be so bad if there wasn't invisible walls in the middle of some of the paths that pushes you back into the maze. What the fuck is this dev's fascination with complete bullshit invisible walls? Once you figure out the path with no invisible walls though, it's a pretty straightforward platforming section. That takes you to another traversal section, this time on a flying turtle, and all this turtle had to do was fly in a straight line to Atlas, it instead takes five completely pointless turns to dodge the refund policy of people who might just beat this game slightly too fast. So we make it to Atlas and the sex section of the game. So quickly moving on before YouTube sends this video to the Shadow Realm, you hop onto this ship in a bottle, which is supposed to begin the next traversal section. I jump on the front of the ship to attempt to get a nice view. The developer who, remember, opened Unreal for five minutes before making this game, did not know how to react when players decided to do this. What the f I just No, no way, did I just bug the game? ARE YOU FUCKING KIDDING ME?! 17 minutes later, I make it back to the porn section, where I get distracted discussing the intricacies of the copulation this game is currently symbolized on display. So distracted, that I fell all the way back to the bike lane. And look, there's a tongue. I- NO! I just got fucked. I just got real. I just got fucking real. 24 minutes later, and I finally make it back to the pirate ship, where this time, I stand in the very back, as far back as humanly possible from the bow, to make sure that I don't no clip this time. We float up to Atlantis, I guess, which is literally one of those pointless sections in the entire game, with zero fucking parkour, and literally just a straight shot to this cannon that takes you to the next section. Although I did attempt to grab the sword for like five minutes thinking that it was an item, it was not. We get launched up to Ice Cap Zone, one of the coolest looking areas in the game. What isn't very cool is these platforms fucking breaking. Thank God Atlantis was there to catch my fall. I make it back to the ice platforming section where this time I have broken all the fake ones. The snow globe area is really easy, this platforming section as well. I don't know why there's oranges in a snow area. And I make it into this little ice tunnel and notice my next pointless collectible, this orange floating in the middle of this tunnel. I notice that, but what I don't notice is that this area has no fucking floor. Okay, <gasps> No! I sure as shit had my priority straight then. I? Same with the feet. Damn it, I'm thinking about it again. Atlantis did not save me this time, and neither did anything else since they were all fucking invisible, but thankfully, I landed on Greece. At this point in the game, I realized that it's pretty difficult to break your fall when every object is popping in as you're zooming by it. So I turned my render distance to epic. I did that over 30 hours in. 28 minutes after I fell to Greece, I make it back to the ice cap zone in the tunnel of my demise. And as I climb up those stairs, this is the sentence I say. Okay, let me not be a fucking dumbass this time. He's gonna be a dumbass. As for some reason, I really, really badly wanted this pointless orange collectible. And I realized that I have to lose some progress in order to get it. Now let me ask you something. Is this pointless orange worth losing progress? No. Well, I disagreed at the time as I fucking committed suicide trying to get it just to fucking miss. The second time around, some wave of knowledge hit my brain as not only do I remember to fucking jump this time around, but I also realized that if I time it correctly, I can actually get this item without losing progress. So, bafflingly, I am prepared to sacrifice my progress for a fucking pointless orange again. Five dollars, he's missing. I got it! Oh my god, it actually worked! Didn't shake on it. We didn't shake on it. So with me finally collecting the pointless orange that I shit you not, counting the initial drop and all the runbacks, took me over 40 fucking minutes to get, I can now proceed forward with the rest of the ice cap zone. Which for the most part is pretty easy with the only somewhat difficult part being these icicles that drop on the platform that you're on in an attempt to push you off like the dickhead that these developers are. We make it past that section to a random phone booth where we receive a very familiar call. Back to the favelas. Your friends are there. Your destiny and life is there. You have to seek happiness there. Get a job in the favelas and live there. There are many like you. You have to be with them and not stand- Make it to this helicopter, which unlike the first helicopter, we can actually ride on this time. sure what was going on but when i first got here every time i would hop onto this chopper it would take off fly forward for five seconds then reverse back for about five minutes i kept trying it wouldn't work i watched a video the guy got on it first try and thought that my entire run was bugged and was about to rob the fucking developer of this game for my ten dollars back turns out all i had to do was drop down to the previous section do the parkour again and then hop onto the helicopter and it worked just fine 
Hey, Dev, you might want to pick up that brain that you left earlier, because what the fuck? The helicopter takes you to the main menu screen of this game, which is a very random location to use as the menu screen. A better one would have been the favela, since that's where I spent the majority of the game. My first go around, I was about to beat this section, actually surprisingly easy. I cannot say the same about my later runs. It's mostly just platforming on floating shit, and a lot of them being small, which you'd expect would be my worst nightmare. But you'd be wrong, because what's actually my worst nightmare is this umbrella and paper birds as they're either lubed up or something, Otherwise, why does my character fucking slip and slide off of them every time his sketchers land on it? The first time, I casually slipped straight the fuck off of it. The second time, my boots had a perfect grip despite me doing the exact same thing. Not too bad, I thought. I climbed onto the paper bird, jumped onto the other one, walked up to its neck to prepare myself for the third one, just to slip straight off of its lube neck. The helicopter takes me back first try. I return to the section, jump on the umbrella, stand perfectly on it, full grip and all, and then slide off. Why is this game like this? It's so dog shit. I land on it a second time doing the exact same thing and stay perfectly on this time. This game has the consistency of a dick with erectile dysfunction. Having short term memory loss, I think about going on the bird's lubed up neck again, but remembering a flash of the outcome from last time, I think better of it and jump on its wing instead. And then I see two fucking umbrellas. I am fucked. Thankfully, they must have ran out of lube after using the entire fucking bottle on that first umbrella, as these two are drier than the Sahara, and I casually jump off of them. Onto the statue part, which is very easy, as if you fail, you just drop onto the bottom of the statue and can go ahead and try again. You make your way up to the top, then drop all the way back down to get a pointless daisy item. It's the orange all over again. Why am I like this? Then climb up again and proceed onto the bridge. I hated high road and I hate this bridge. My first run though, I was able to complete this bridge first try. I cannot say the same about my later runs. We make it to this really thematically cool black and white section with this killer will that killed the protagonist, grandma or some shit. I don't fucking know. Ask Matt Pat, not me. When I was one year old, my grandmother was dragged away by a whale on the old pier. Okay. Right over to William Defoe's lighthouse and climb up the side into the killer whale's mouth, through its stomach, and out of its ass. We just casually got a whale anatomy lesson and only up. This game is teaching me a lot, especially with that sex ed course from earlier. Balance our way up a sword towards a lubed up propeller who must have been the cousin of the umbrella because my character slipped all the way back down to the ancient Japan statue. I jump to the other propeller this time, the one that you're obviously supposed to jump on, but I'm dense, and make it up the whale that's been stabbed 10,000 times through the rainbow bridge on my way to Asgard. And then one of the most fucked up things and the entire run occurs. Joey, remember the drone. So where the night before I spent two hours to make it in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, today I was able to make it back to the ancient Japan section in just over an hour with very little fails. And then I fell off the bridge section. Being impatient, I attempted to make it back to where I was quicker by jumping on this bed to take a shortcut. Oh, you did. I got this. No! It was not the last time. After a little over 30 minutes, I was back to the ancient Japan section only to quickly fail this jump that I had never failed before and plumbing my ass all the way back down to Greece. This is beginning to look a lot like yesterday. About 20 minutes past this time, I make it back to Japan and fail another jump, this time one of the easiest jumps in the section, and fall all the way back down to Greece once a fucking get. Where would I be if it wasn't for this place? Another 30 minutes go by and watching this back, I have no idea how I had the patience for this, but I do it, and not only do I make it past the very easy jumps in the Japan section, I make it past the crash bridge as well, and finally, I am back to the whale, which is easy as fuck. Asgard is right there, I'm almost back to where I lost. 
I then jump on the exact same lubed up propeller wing. I'm gonna develop dementia. Thankfully, the gods touched my hand on this day as I landed on one of the most generous beds in the entire game next to the one at the mall. A bed that perfectly launches me all the way back up to the whale, unless I bonk my head. A bed that perfectly launches me back up to the whale, where I can try this jump again and land on the actual correct propeller this time around. And that bed must have used up all the remaining luck on this playthrough as not even a minute later, my grab dice roll landed on go fuck yourself. Whoa! Why aren't you grabbing? What are you doing? We make it up the sword, up the heart, and onto the plummet of a hollow that fucked me yesterday. Through no fault of my own, but through the fault of this dev who's a So what I did last time was jump directly into the center area with all this food, which is what you think you're supposed to fucking do since that's what you do the entire game. What you're actually supposed to do is jump on these broken fragments to the side. That is all I had to fucking do. Four hours of my life would have been saved if I just looked to the fucking left. So after we bypass the troll drop and continue our way following the rainbow road, we get to this minor earth tree from Elden Ring, which has a golden apple item. I still don't know what these do. And a reference to the dog shit game that only up was inspired by, even though I'd be in this game three times now, it still finds a way to make me suffer. Up the golden elevator, which finally, finally leads me to the final part of the game. And I nearly started shitting myself seeing all the shit above me thinking that I was gonna have to do it all over again. So the elevator leads up to this weird inverted favela area. I guess I listened to the elephant after all. You go up it the same way you've done a hundred times at this point, through a tube and all the way. What the fuck are you doing here? For some reason, a dragon is flying around here. At first, it scared the shit out of me, making me think that I'd have to fight it or some bullshit like that and finally put the roll feature to good use. But shortly after, I realized that they kind of just aimlessly flew around without any collision or hitboxes, I assume. So you make it up another favela. I just can't seem to escape. And just like in the very beginning, I get lost in this favela area. Somehow after 40 hours, my skill level has stayed the exact fucking same. And we begin the final platforming section, perhaps the most tense platforming section of the game, since I really did not want to fuck it up. And I was also still kind of worried about my boy Alduin having his joyride. The platforming itself isn't too hard. You jump on random objects that I assume are references to what this dev likes. The most disgusting slice of pizza ever conceived, a bedroom which contains an eat, sleep, game repeat poster six dollars and 44 cents plus an 8.99 delivery fee mm -hmm. at this point i was pretty casually just jumping from platform to platform that is until all the one was suddenly getting too close for comfort i was cucked by a gaming laptop and nearly shit what? myself thank god for this maze breaking my fall because knowing myself i likely would have dropped to like ancient japan started playing impatiently before finding my way back to the factory new train within the span of a minute i make it back to the laptop i don't mantle up it like an idiot this time proceed up to the ps5 where i get lost in an attempt to figure out where to go, I jump on this pair. I should not have jumped on the pair. Whoa, you're, are you fucking kidding me? My second go around on the PS5, I actually figure out where I'm supposed to go, which is just this leaf hanging off a massive vine. And then this traversal hoverboard to take me to the next section. I have went on a lot of traversal sections at this point. Most of them took me where I needed to go without fail. Most of them. Are you fucking- So I hopped on this hoverboard, not expecting much. Although Alduin had other plans. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. <gasps> what the? Are you kidding me? What? <laughs> Are you actually being for real? What? What am I supposed to do? How is that my fault? The second time I make it to the hoverboard, I inspect the dragon's movements like a hawk before getting on to make sure that I don't get beamed off the board this time. The dragon thankfully leaves me alone, but not before performing a high speed chase that scared the living shit out of me near the end. More of the same here, just some more platforming and cowering from a dragon and I still don't comprehend his business here. And then bouncing up this blue thing that takes me up to the Illuminati's lair. You collect one final pointless item, this time being a golden egg, before bouncing your ass all the way up to the top while the Eye of Cthulhu stares at you. How the fuck is my character not being spaghettified right now? A satellite's above me, which is obviously where I'm supposed to go. I charge into the black hole, which has an elevator, somebody informed NASA, which takes me up to the satellite where finally I complete the How did I manage to do that? One last fall before completing the game, no hurt, no follow, and back up to the elevator we go, and this time, for real, without falling, I have completed the game in 207 minutes. 
not counting the other 2,000 minutes of runs. But forget that, we get an actual cutscene where an astronaut talks to us and gives us our own ship and a spacesuit. Thanks, dickhead. That would have been very useful when I was eye to eye with a fucking black hole. Why would I need this now? We take off to God knows where, probably the favelas knowing this game, and the astronaut makes a Star Wars reference. And may the force be with you. I did all that for a Star Wars reference. That's it? That's all I get? I don't get to burn the favelas, I don't get to skin the elephant, I don't get a boss battle with my dad, I just get a Star Wars reference? Many of the little orphan elephants have lost their mothers because of poachers. I mean, just take a look at this lot. These are wire snares. This is how the poachers kill the animals. And that <laughs> is...